let's go through our double bar graphs pre-assessment. Question number one. Use the data below. Construct and label a bar graph. So we have our data over here about how many students like different types of transportation. And we're going to build a bar graph for this. So as you can see, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five bars for this. Our highest number is 36. So we have to go up to 36 on our graph. Let's start building our graph. Now I'm using a ruler to draw a vertical axis and a horizontal axis making sure to leave a little bit of space for the titles for both. Our vertical axis is going to be the number of students. And our horizontal axis is going to be the method of travel. Right now I have to go up to 36, so I have to figure out how many lines I have on my graph. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got 11. Now 10 is a much easier to number to work with, so we'll use 10 lines. And if I take 36 and I round it, I will get 40. 40 divided by 10 will give me 4. So each line will count as 4. So I'm going to start here. 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. All right. Now, on a bar graph, you generally want to organize it some way, highest number to lowest number, lowest to highest, something like that. So I'm going to organize it by lowest to highest. So I'm going to put in my first bar, it's going to be bicycle. I'm writing it really small. And it needs to be go up to three. Now three is not quite all the way to four, so I'm going to draw a straight line there, about three quarters of the way up and down there and then I'm going to fill it in with a color I'm going to fill this one in with red so I've finished bicycle next one I'm going to do other which is four now bars have to be spaced out so other is four so I take a ruler and I put it there There is other, and I'm going to color that one in in blue. Other is done. The next one is car up to 26. 26 will be halfway between 24 and 28. So I draw my bar. And this will be car. And I'm going to color it car in in orange. Give another space and we're going to do walk. Walk is at 31. 31 will just be before 32. So use my ruler again to draw every bar. Make sure this is nice and neat. And I'm going to do car walk in pink. And this is walk. And lastly, I'm going to do the bus. The bus goes up to 36. 36 is easy because it's right on a line. And here we have bus. And I'm going to color that one in in green. 
There's my bar graph. It is almost complete. It needs a title. And I'm going to call this, this is the methods of travel used by students. Now let's check that we have everything that a graph needs. We have a main title here. We have a title for our vertical axes here. We have a title for our horizontal axes here. We have our scales here. We have labels for the bars here. And our bars are nice and neat. That is now worth four out of four marks. B, write a question from the information in this bar graph and answer it. You can at, write simple questions or complicated questions. And I'm going to write a simple one. What is the most common form of transportation? And when you look at the graph, it is the bus is the most common form of transportation. I wrote down the question, write the question, and answer it. Make sure I do everything that's asked of me in the question. Let's move on to question number two. Cole surveyed his classmates to find out what kind of footwear they wear at home. He put the information into bar graphs. Here's graph number one, and here's graph number two. So, letter A. How many classmates wear slippers? So this is asking us for a total Totals are found in graph number one. So I'm going to find slippers here, and I count up the scales, and I notice that slippers goes all the way to seven. Seven classmates wear slippers. What is the most common footwear? Well, I look again at the totals chart. That's graph number one. And I find the highest bar, and the highest bar is for shoes. Letter C, how many classmates wear socks or slippers? So this one's asking about both socks and slippers. So again, it's about totals. So I look at the socks bar, and the socks bar goes to 5. And I look at the slippers bar, and the slippers bar goes to 7. So the answer to this will be 5 plus 7, which will equal 13 in total. All right. Letter D, how are the graphs the same? So what do they both have? So they both have bars. Um, the same data. the same titles and the same types of footwear. So they have a lot that's the same. How are the graphs different? Graph 1 shows us the totals. The totals for each footwear. Graph 2 shows not shoes shows. I mean, it shows about shoes, but it's not shoes. It should be shows. Shows how many boys and girls wore each type.
So graph two shows how many boys and girls wear each type of footwear. What can you tell from one graph that you cannot tell from the other graph? Well, graph one tells us about the totals. And graph two tells us about the boys and girls preferences. I can figure out the totals from graph two. If I take the boys number, which is five, and the girls number is four, and I add them together, I will get nine. So I can figure out the total from graph number two. But in graph number one, I cannot tell how many boys like one thing or girls like the other. So in graph two, I can tell how many boys or girls like each type. I cannot tell that from graph number one. All right, so you can see how a normal bar graph and a double bar graph, this one being a double bar graph, tell you a little bit different information. The double bar graph is always a little bit more detailed. Can't even spell graph, Greg. The double bar graph is always a little bit more detailed and compares two or more sets of data. All right, let's go on to number three. Look at the data in the table below and make a double bar graph to match on the grid. All right, so here we're making a double bar graph for this data. So I'm going to need a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Hmm. Mostly straight. On the vertical axis, I'm going to write in the amount of precipitation. Precipitation. And that'll be measured in millimeters. Always include the units. On the horizontal, I'm going to be talking about the cities. All right. Now we have to figure out the vertical scale. I have to find the highest number here. It's 150. So I have to go up to 150. Now let's count off how many squares I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Well, if I count up by 10s, I don't make it. If I count up by 20s, I get up there pretty quickly. If I count up by 15s, it'll work out. 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120, 135, 150. That's as high as I need to go. All right, so let's start off with Charlottetown. So Charlottetown needs two bars. It needs one bar for January and one bar for July. So I'm going to do the bar for January 1st and July 2nd. The January bar is at 106, so that's just going to be above 105 here. So this is Charlottetown in January. All the Januaries are going to get the same color. I'm going to do Januaries in blue because it's colder in January. And in July in Charlottetown, it's 86. So 86 is between 75 and 90, and it's closer to 90 than it is 75. So I'm going to put it up about here. And I'm going to do this one in red because it's warmer in July. Notice how Charlottetown's bars are close together. Charlottetown. Now I have to do a space before I go to Fredericktons. So 
so I have to put a gap in before Fredericton's. Now, Fredericton's is 110. So 110 is just a little bit higher than 105. There's 110. And I complete my bar, and I shade it in in blue. All the Januaries are in blue. Now I do July. July is 87. So it'll be pretty close to the exact same as Charlotte Towns. And I fill this one in in red. And I title this city. This is Fredericton. We're done Fredericton. Now we do Halifax. Again, leave a gap. And Halifax is at 134. So 134 is just below 135. Just below it. And draw down. Use your rulers to make it nice and neat. Shade it in in blue. And then it's 107 in July. So I go to just above 105. One oh seven. And then I call this one Halifax. Now the last one, St. John's. Again, I have to leave a gap between St. John's and the next one. And I put it way up to 150. Use my ruler to draw it out. Shade it in in blue. And then 89 millimeters for July. So that's just shy of 90 again. You can hardly tell. And I shade that one in red. I call this one St. John's. Now every double bar graph needs a key. And in the key is the code to the colors. So blue, blue is January, and red is July. Now what is this graph missing? Well, this graph is now missing the title, the main title. And the, the graph is about precipitation. in maritime cities. The Maritimes are New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and St. John's. Not St. John's, that's not a province. Newfoundland, those are the maritime provinces. And there is our double bar graph. It has everything that we need. Main title, Title for the vertical axes, title for the horizontal axes, scale, labels about what the graphs are, and a key. Every graph needs to have those things. Letter A, write a question about your graph and answer it. Well, you're going to choose the easiest question that you can. Which city received the most precipitation in one month? And if you notice I spelled received wrong, I always spell received wrong. It should be E-I, not I-E. And the answer to that would be St. John's in January.
you could make questions that force you to do some math, like which city had the highest total, and then it would be tough to tell between St. John's and Halifax. You'd have to add them up and figure it out. Or which one had the biggest difference, and you could see that St. John's has the biggest difference between the highest month, between January and July. There's lots of questions that you could ask about it. It's a test, so I asked the simplest one. Number four, why do you think people put information into a double bar graph to display it rather than leaving it on a table? Well, in a graph, the differences between pieces of data are more obvious. So up here, if I just had the table here, it's hard to see, hard to get my head around what's going on with just the table. But when I see the graph, it's easy to see that St. John's has way more than the other ones. Charlottetown has the less, the least in January. And it's easy to see that Halifax has the most in July. And it's easier to see in the graph than it is in the table. All right, if you have any questions about this, put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.